Funding for this program provided in part by the Sanibel Captiva Chamber of Commerce. And by the West Wind Inn. All right, vegetable, chicken noodle. Hi, I'm here at an old general store. This is uh, part of the uh, Sanibel Historical Museum. And uh, I'm gonna be painting a picture of this from the outside. I'm gonna be using an old photograph as a reference. Uh, so I'm gonna get out and get set up. You sit back and relax and watch me make a fool out of myself. Where do they keep the TV dinners at around here? Hello everyone, I'm Bob Fagan. Welcome to Painting on Location. Guess where we are? We're here at the Sanibel Captiva Historical Museum. These are all outbuildings that have been moved from different parts of the island, and they're putting them here in a group so that people can come here and go on tour. It's really a pretty spot. They've got, uh, they've decorated the inside. This is a, uh, an old time store and used to be a gas station. And uh, I think it was over on the other side of the island, uh, and the ferries used to come in and bring supplies and things like that. It was kind of the place to go on the island back in the uh, 40s and 50s and 30s, probably. And I also went in and borrowed a photograph from uh, the people inside. Now, this picture was probably taken, taken uh, I would say, in the 50s, early 50s, because I recognize a, that looks like an old Plymouth or something there. But uh, this is where the store and gas station was sitting back then. You can see the dock. And where I'm standing right now, I'm probably standing someplace in here. So what I'm going to do is uh, throw some paint at this, and I'll be referring to this photograph once in a while. It's really fun to look at this. It's kind of like uh, going back in time. I'm going to go ahead and get started. And uh, what I'm going to do is uh, the sun is kind of coming in and out of the clouds, so it's going to be cloudy sometimes and sunny sometimes. So I'm going to go with the sun, because I like that nice bright white over there. And I'm just going to start mixing up some uh, cool colors here, some blue. Get this situated. Now, later on, I may put a darker sky back in there just to make this thing really pop out. Mix up some blue and a little bit of yellow, a little bit of burnt sienna. The whole front of this building is kind of in the shade except for a little area right here. So I'm just going to paint over all that. I'm going to start right here. And I don't have to worry about the roof because it's going to be a lot darker and I can go back over this later. So I'll just run some color down that way. And out here. Now, I gotta remember to save my little white area there. That is gonna move because the sun is gonna be moving too. So I'll paint that and then a strip down here. Just paint all that down inside there. Paint around this little area. Get some more color. A little brown down in there. And just start working it this way. Bring it here. What I like to do is at first just paint big shapes. I think I'll reach back in and get a little bit of yellow and put in there, just, just for some variation. And then I think I'll go ahead and paint my shadow out there, even though I don't see one right at the moment. Go ahead and put some of that out there. Because I want the sun to really come from this direction. Now, I'm going to be going back in this thing several times. Right now, I just want to put down the big shapes. Something kind of like that. Got the same blue here, and I'll just add more burnt sienna to that. To that. It probably, that thing probably has a new roof on it since, the, uh, since they moved it. They've, uh, 
They've restored the inside quite a bit and the outside. I imagine the uh, moving process probably loosened a lot of the boards, so they had to go back in there and really reinforce that thing. Doesn't have to be exactly straight there. A little more brown in that. This is such a pretty place to come and paint. I love getting out like this. And then up this way. All right. To go ahead and get into some of my green. Go to a little bit bigger brush now. Kind of mix up uh, some green. I'm, I'm getting yellow right now. I'm mixing it in with that blue that I had before. We'll go ahead and paint some of this grassy area in here. Paint right up to that little boardwalk. A little more yellow. Create the uh, illusion of some sunshine. Isn't that fun? I like using these big brushes. Goes up in there. Now I'm gonna come back in here later too. Put some uh, blades of grass and, and so, so forth in there. All right, that's dry over there. I can get into some of those palm trees now. Those things are always fun to paint. Get yourself a flat brush like this, and get some color. And you kind of lay the, uh, you lay the brush on the paper like this, and you kind of start spreading it out like that. You just bend the brush like that, and then you flip it. See that? And that kind of makes those little palm-looking things. So that way you don't have to go in and paint each one. See that, isn't that fun? Get another color, put in there. And as that dries, you can keep going back in there. And of course, you can make the trunk. So that's how I'm gonna do that area up there. All right. All right. Put some of those puppies in. I'm going to mix in a little burnt sienna with that. All right. And a little dry brush down in here. All the way up to here. I'm going to paint around that little boardwalk there. Don't have to put in every little detail. Just enough to show that there's foliage and stuff like that in there. And paint some of that here. All back in here. And there's a little bush there. And I'll go ahead and put some of that over here. Put some of, the, some of that around that gas pump over there. It was really fun to come here because those, uh, those old gas pumps over there remind me, uh, I can remember those things when I was a kid. Not that I'm that old, but uh, they, uh, what they did was they pumped, uh, there's a handle over there, and you grab that handle, and you go back and forth like that, and the gas fills up inside that clear area there, and you put in a certain amount of, like, however many gallons you want, you pump it up to that level, and then on the other side, you just grab the nozzle, put it down to your tank, and it runs out. Real simple. No electronics. There was a gas station uh, where, where we used to go all the time that had, uh, it was a restaurant, and we used to go there and eat and get gas. So you can, you can still do that, I think. All right. I think I'm going to stop here for a while and let all this dry completely, and then I'm going to come back and start putting in some windows, a few little details, 
and uh, just keep the whole thing going. Hi, Sam. How you doing? Hello. Nice to meet you. Good to have you here. This is a great place. I can't wait to get over here and throw some paint at this, you know? <laughs> so. Well, it's got a lot of it's got a lot of history. This, uh, yeah. this building and all the other buildings. As far as I know, uh, I'm the only man uh, that's alive that was actually born on the island. I have two brothers that were born before I was, but they were born in Fort Myers in the hospital. And my father says I can do a better job than that. So he got a midwife and a nurse and a cook. And and my mother said she had never had it so good as she did when when I was born. What are they doing over here? Let's go take a look. Oh, well, we got a, we got a new building. Okay. We got a new building. It, uh, it's uh, that building's at least 90 years old. It used to be down in the bay, but this represents uh, not only a, a, a chapel, but it also represents one of the old homes. Several people lived in it. The structure we're done on it now is to get it back to its original uh, shape and form. Are these gentlemen uh, volunteers back here? All the the the, the labor. On, on all these buildings, it's been absolutely free. It has been. Isn't that great? I, I love to see this kind of stuff. This was a farming district. Uh, when my father came here, that's all it was from, from about 1890 to, to in, past uh, World War I. This was all, the, that was the industry of uh, farming and, and fishing. That, that was it. This, uh, this building that we're coming up onto now is the, oh, uh, tea room, huh? is the tea room, and this was uh, down on the bay with the with the next to the old store. Yeah. The ferry boat landed in front of the uh, front of this building, and uh, people would come in and have a cup of tea and that a, sounds and great. A cookie. It, it and looks a, very inviting in there. Now. Sandwich, and we mow the mow the old post office, which that post office is boards in there probably 100 years old. It got blown down in three hurricanes and we had to go back in the swamp and bring it back out and put it back together again. This okay. is the, well, it's actually my father's second store. The first store was uh, out on the end of the dock and was blown down in the 26th hurricane. And uh, we started building this one on the land, down on the bay, and we moved it up here from the bay. And this was the, uh, the lifeline of the island. Out in front of it was the, was the dock where the mail boat came in, and all the, most of the material that was brought over here was brought in on the mail boat. Look at this. Boy, this is nice. We tried to uh, reset this as close as we could to what the, uh, the old store used to look, uh, uh, and it does. It looks a great deal like uh, what we used to have. Uh, Back here in the corner is a picture of my father, and that was his desk. Oh. That's his desk uh, back there. This particular uh, uh, case here was our was our candy case, and and that was very much like what the cash register looked like. Yep. Uh, we weighed things on a scale because when you get old, you like to reminisce. You like to, you know. At one time when I was a kid, I used to say. Uh, if I ever get off this damn island, I'll never come back. But uh, that was one of the times my dad had me working in the mosquitoes, you know. And I, <laughs> it wasn't too pleasant. And, but then you start thinking about it, and, and you want to preserve that. You want to preserve your childhood. If you wipe all this out, you have no way of showing. And we want to do something here that we can, uh, we can uh, uh, talk about our heritage. Okay, this is all nice and dry now. It should be able to create some magic on here. Let's see what happens. Will he be able to do it or not? Is he going to blow it or what? I don't know how you are, but I know that uh, painting out like this, uh, a lot of times, most times, I end up painting on the other side because uh, I feel like the painting isn't good enough and I could have done better. And what's wrong with me? But, uh, and I used to take that serious. Anymore, it doesn't bother me that much. It's like, it doesn't really matter. It's just a sketch anyway. All right, what I'm doing now is I'm gonna put a shadow underneath this uh, overhang here. There's a nice uh, shadow there I need to put in. It's a little bit darker under here. 
Put some of that there. And then here. And then kind of move that stuff down this way. Same over here. Something like that. Get some water. Kind of spread that out a little bit. Something like that. Get a little bit of, a uh, little darker under there. I think I'll put a little bit of yellow back in there too. Just for some variation. Now, I think I'll do the same thing, very slight, underneath this overhang here. I, uh, there's some of those uh, little boards that are coming down under the roof. I want to paint around those, so I'll do it like this. And then get some water, kind of spread that out also. Just enough. OK, I'm just going to get a dark color here, just more blue and brown. Mix that together. And put in a few of these windows back here. If you ever get a chance to come to uh, Sanibel Captiva, be sure you stop out here and take a look at this. Uh, most of the, the people that they use that are putting this together are uh, volunteers, and they come out on their own and uh, put this uh, work on this place. Uh, there's a chapel on the other side over there that they were working on the other day. And uh, really doing a good job. And I'll drop a little bit darker color down in there for some variation. And make that thing pop out. Variation here, back up in here. Now, I can go back in there later, too. All right. Now, this is dry in here also, so I'll go ahead and put the doors and uh, gas pumps and all that back in there. All right, here again, it's just dark shapes back in there, blue and brown. You probably see me doing a lot of squinting, too, when I paint. People look at you, they think you're in pain. I am in a little pain, but uh, mostly it's just when I squint at something, it gets rid of all the detail, and all you see is are shapes. And that's, uh, if you paint what you see when you squint, it, it is actually a lot easier to do that. So try that next time. Go ahead and squint. All right. Let's see, there's a door here that comes behind that glass pump. And that comes down here. There's a little separation. And that continues on. Something like that. Same over here. I'm not sure if that was the original doors to this or not. Probably, I'm sure it was in the same spot. I know that that little railing over there wasn't probably there back in the uh, 30s. Now I'm going to start on those pumps. I'm not sure those were the original pumps either. Could be. Bring that down. And the same over here. These don't have to be perfect. What I usually do is, uh, is I'll take something like this back, you know, back home and, and uh, square up the edges later if I feel like it needs it. I kind of like the loose feeling of a painting on location, you know, when it's done very quickly, because the sun is moving and uh, you don't have a whole lot of time. And I'm just gonna kind of make this up. I want a shadow coming across here like this. Put that puppy in there. I really want to show the direction of the sun. I like the way that looked. Back up here, I think I'll put some shadows here, too. Some of those bushes. And I'm going to darken this other shadow up again, too. A 
this one back here. Start where that little board, that little piece of sidewalk ends and make that shadow darker. Back here. Something like that. Some of that in there. I don't know why, but I like to do that. It makes me feel important. I usually do something like that when I can't think of anything else to do, you know. My daughter, uh, when she was a little girl, she uh, used to watch me paint, and uh, she saw me throwing, doing that one day, taking my brush and flipping it like that when I was painting. So I think it was like a day or so later, I went in her room, and uh, there was paint up the, uh, up the wall on the ceiling and down the other side where she had been painting, and she'd taken her brush and doing it like that, you know, cop doing what Daddy did, so. That was kind of cute. All right. I'm going to indicate some of these boards. Just kind of show what the uh, building is made from. It's kind of a gray color. Just a few. So go this way. Back under here, maybe. A few of them here. Some of them over here. Which are not very straight, but that's okay. I want to make it real rough. And some lines coming this way. All right. Now, I think what I want to do is uh, the sun's been in and out today. And uh, at one time of the day, it was, it was real dark over in here. So I think I want to darken up the sky over in this area and start making it get lighter over here so that I can really emphasize that sun like maybe a, uh, maybe a storm just went by. Sometimes you'll see white buildings, uh, and in the background, you can see where uh, the storm just went by, and it really makes things pop, and that's kind of what I want to try here. So, let's reach back in here and get some of this stuff I've already got in here, some blue and brown. There's some beautiful cloud formations here in Florida. All right, Let's see if I can get this to work. Let's come back here. I'm gonna go ahead and paint over this roof again. Then as I start going that way, I'm gonna start uh, putting more water in it. I wanna thin it out. All right, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do a little bit more work here on the grass. I want to kind of tone this area down kind of in a circle here because I really want this light. I need that light over there. So I'm just mixing up some blue and yellow. And I'm going to just do it like this, kind of darken this area away from the sun. You have to kind of oversimplify. As things get farther away from the sun, the darker they get. And that's kind of what I'm thinking. And it'll take some water, kind of do that. Just kind of tone it down a little bit. 
And then I want to go back in and just kind of put some, some rough areas in there, some grass. And just kind of rough it up a little bit. All right. This has really been fun. Let me show you the picture here again. There's the, uh, the way it looked back in, back who knows when. I like the little girl on the dock here. I don't know who that is, but uh, she's cute, having a good time. We got an old truck over here, and I don't know what that is, some old Chrysler or something. If you know what these cars are, write me a letter and let me know. I'd be interested. Well, what a fun day this has been. I tell you, if you ever get a chance to come to Sanibel, stop by and see this place. It's, uh, it's, it's good for the kids. It's good to see what, what it used to be like uh, back then, way back when. So I'm on to another location, and uh, who knows where that's going to be. So until the next time I see you, I'm Bob Fagan, and we've been painting on location. This program is available on video for just $17.95 or $179.95 for the whole 13-part Sanibel Captiva series. Also, Bob has produced three one-hour instructional videos on the art of watercolor painting. Each one is available for $19.95 or $36.95 for your choice of two, or all three for $54.95. Call 1-800-353-2232 to order. Now, see this box right here? Uh huh. I, I give you $100 if you tell me what that box is for. You never get it. $100. Uh, salt pork bacon. Salt pork bacon. And see, we don't have any refrigeration. Oh. And of course, we had all kinds of vegetables and, and, and uh, you know, we had fruit and, and, and vegetables, but very little meat. And the way you did it was you put a layer of salt and then put a slab of bacon and you cover it and tie it with salt and then you put another slab and you cut it. Uh -huh. And you just come in and say, I want two or three pounds, and you cut it off and take it over and weigh it, see? But almost everybody bought salt pork bacon. And then if you, if you had a, a chicken <laughs> or if you had a gopher or a pond bird or whatever else, so you got the, the drippings off of your, you made, you made gravy with the drippings off the bacon, and, uh, and you also gave you fat, too. My grandma used to make soap out of that. You're still here after eating yeah. all that greasy food. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's great. <laughs>